Good morning, everyone. It's another brisk day here in Nepal. As you can tell, people are slowly waking up. We just drank our coffees at the hotel. Really good. Uh, we paid 190 rupees. Just something to like wake up our souls and warm up our hearts because it's so chilly. Just when you think you've gotten used to it, no. Once you get out those covers, you realize how cold it is and you just want to jump right back in them. So yeah, guys, it's, it's bright and early. Uh, but we love, I don't know, there's something about this this city, this town, the state, this these streets, these alleys, like something's very, uh, you have every intention of, you just want to be out in them, doing everything, seeing everything, and just living life. Good morning, Good morning sir. They, again, the kindest people. I don't know. We just need to keep putting out this good energy because that's usually what you get back in return. And, okay, okay I'm about to get hit. <laughs> so, you know what? Let me put out some uh, less, some not get hit energy right now. <laughs> Namaste. Good seeing you, bud. Well, over here is the navigator for today. It's me. Since Google I Maps. failed. <laughs> but we'll see if Google Maps is actually right because in the Philippines, Google Maps always led us to the wrong place almost. It's a beautiful day this morning, so we figured why not get our morning exercise in with this nice stroll. It also gives us a opportunity to sightsee, check out the local markets, see what the locals are up to this morning. And as you can tell, a lot of them are buying their meat, they're buying their produce. It's pretty lively and we just gotta keep our eyes on the road since no vehicle is ever gonna stop for you. Gotta go. Yeah, like Jose said, we talk, We decided to walk. Here's the thing, if you're new, Jose and I tend to like, to walk the places, or some people would say like to make them harder than it needs to be, but walking is when we get to see the neighborhoods, the people. So we'll skip the, we'll skip the, the taxi ride for this one. We'll just walk <laughs> as much as we can. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we are nearing our destination. Whew, that's pretty high up. We made it to the temple ground and the name is quite difficult for us to pronounce, so we'll put the name down below. But it's commonly referred as the Monkey Temple. It's gonna be very hard for me to not smile here, because if you've been following along, we went back to a monkey sanctuary in the Philippines and showing your smile, showing your teeth is a sign of aggression. And I almost got attacked by monkeys. And let me tell you, there's like hundreds upon hundreds of monkeys just here at the entrance. I got to put on my best poker face as we hike up the stairs to the stupa at the very top of this hill. They are massive. Oh, he heard me. So yeah, this actual spot is very, very historical and it's very, very important landmark here in Kathmandu. Um, it's celebrated by Buddhists and Hindus alike. It's a combination of both cultures coming together, religions, and we don't know what to expect, but we're super excited to be here. And we know if you come to Kathmandu for a couple days, that might be the only thing. Jose is getting attacked by a monkey right now, so that's interesting. Oh my gosh, that monkey almost pulled my pants down. That was terrifying. So I'm going to put my bag up front because they might think that I have food in it. Exactly, that's what they think. That was scary. <laughs> oh, he's looking at me. 300 plus steps starts now. Easy peasy. So I 
was talking to Jose, because I did some research in this place, not a lot, but like a little bit, so at least I knew what I was walking into, and I could talk faxes rather than just like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Anyway, anyway, these replicas, we were showing the swirly sign. It looks like a swirly sign, or almost a question mark in between the eyes of Buddha. Um, it's actually the Nepali sign for the number one. It represents all things and earth coming together as one, and the path to enlightenment being Buddha. So. Just, yeah, the more you know. I figured I'd show him now on the smaller ones versus the big one up, up there, which is actually part of the World UNESCO Heritage Site. We haven't even made our way up like 20 <laughs> stairs, so we got much more. We can tell you all about it as we go. Namaste. Can I record this? Love it. own song. Oh my little home. Hello, Namaste. Namaste. This one's Mandala. Lotus flower. Ah. The lotus? Yeah, lotus flower. Oh, I have. Yeah. These are beautiful. How much are you asking for? This, this one is 700. Oh, right. So as you're making your way up the steps, you'll catch a couple of vendors on the side. They're selling sambos, they're selling bracelets, even chia. We're obsessed with chia, so we might pick up some chia on the way out. But this is actually really nice to see the locals selling their goods and it just goes back to their practices. go to get a little rest in here in case you get <laughs> you need a break we're not resting because we're tired or out of breath we're resting to talk to you guys yeah keep, keep telling them that love you guys made it So I'm talking to Jose about the stupa. Also, by the way, it dates back 2,000 plus years. So that's insane. But we're talking about like the umbrella top actually represents like your enlightenment. And then you have the third, I think it's 13 rings underneath, which is like every step to reach that enlightenment. And also, if you'll notice, Buddha's eyes are on all four sides of the stupa, which represent all seeing Buddha. It's also the third eye. And the guy explained the spiral in the middle beneath one. And white dome at the bottom actually represents like Earth. Everything is one. Unity. So it's really, really, really beautiful. And I love the meaning behind it. You just feel enlightened. When you talk about it, I feel enlightened. When you're here, you feel enlightened. Whether you practice religion, spirituality, whatever, it's just a really good feeling. How's the view from up here? It's not until you get it to the viewpoint and look down that you realize, yo, we're in the valley. <laughs> Just surrounded by the Himalayas, it's beautiful. Even if you're not religious, the view alone is worth making that 365 step hike. They suggest that we come visit right when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting. That's probably the perfect time. It's midday now, so you kind of get this like small fog. I'm not sure what it is. So if you happen to know why it looks so hazy, let us know. She did some yoga this morning. She got all the yoga poses. She is flexing. This little guy tried grabbing my bag. Here, you gotta switch. keep it in the front. <laughs> Not smiling. Not smiling today. <laughs> I mean, 
we've seen several stupas throughout our journey in Southeast Asia, but this whole handedly, I would honestly say to you guys, is probably one of the most beautiful, breathtaking stupas I've seen. Not only because it's on top of a hill overlooking all of Kathmandu, but just by the architecture, the beauty that's surrounding the stupa, people paying their respect, and I don't know, I agree with well. I feel so enlightened. I feel so much lighter up here, if that makes any sense. But it's just beautiful. It's truly, truly beautiful. I mean, that's all, it's all about enlightenment. So it's kind of hard not to feel that way. And the more you talk about it, the more you feel it. So it's, it's good. Just if you can carry this feeling throughout the rest of your days, it'd be perfect. If you're walking around the stupa and you feel like you need a refreshment, there are a couple stands along with cafes up here on the hill. So you can just sit down, admire the views, and just pay your respect to the stupa. If you just need a little break. Hey little guy, how were the 365 steps for you? Good? Walk in the park? <laughs> Get it. All right guys, we're heading back down and just take a look at this view that you're getting. This is how high up we are above the town or the city of Kathmandu. I didn't forget you. <laughs> I'm gonna pass on it because I am, but I'll give you a hug just because you've been like the kindest person. Okay. okay. You don't need. I can't. Okay. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. You've been great. But thank you very much. You are awesome. Yeah. We're good. So thank you. You know it's hard because we're here, you know, traveling. So as much as we would love to buy any souvenirs or you know something to remember Nepal, it just be very difficult for us to carry it all now that we downsized to two bags. So the least we could do is give them something to buy themselves a meal uh, for the day. And yeah, kindness goes a long way and yes. hopefully they understand uh, where we're coming from. I'm the person that I hate saying no. I just do, I, I, but you have to sometimes. It's not a no disrespect, it's just like, no. Not right now, but if I want to, I know exactly where to come. Like Sana, she wasn't pushing me to do anything, but she was so kind and she was explaining so much to us. I'm like, I gave her a little something just for being kind and explaining to her. She expected nothing. So, but again, if I could buy everything, you know, everybody, honest to God, I would. Like, And then you're faced with an ultimatum. Do you pack your sambal or do you pack Peace Star? What do you leave behind? Well, I'm not gonna buy a sample and leave it behind. It's more expensive than a piece that we found him on the street. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. When Will and I travel to different countries, not only do we pay respect to the food, to the people, but most importantly, their religion or their beliefs. So for us to hike up to Monkey Temple and experience their beliefs and just seeing it firsthand goes a long way for us understanding a little bit more about the Nepalese people but also getting to know more about the entire country. And on that note, let's go find that chia we talked about earlier this morning and show you guys what you are missing out on and what you should be having when you come to Nepal. So the french fries, I gotta lie, that's what got me in here. I'm not getting french fries, but I mean, that's a good, it's a good way of letting me know this is a great place. Here's the thing, we've discovered very, very, very early on, one of the best parts about being here is that there is food everywhere, so you are not going to go without a billion options. Also, I don't want to jinx us, so should I say it that? Say it. Okay. Everything, every restaurant we've been at, every street, everything we've had so far since we've been here, and it's only been three days, mind you, it's all been good. We have not walked away saying we would never be there again. In fact, other than this place and one other, we've been back to every place we've been to every time. Also, we're people that prefer to go home and eat. Nope. Here, we've been going out trying a new restaurant all the time. So, bring it on. Bring it on. One of the great things we've come to appreciate here in Nepal is that they've been able to cook our food as soon as we order, which is really great to know that it's fresh 
and it's hot, ready, especially during these like cold days, you want to have something warm in your belly. So that makes us really happy. Also, what makes me even more happier is that she has chia. So I ordered us two cups of chia. He just said chia, which means this meal, what I haven't eaten yet, has went from really good to great. Guys, I'm not lying when I say I like chia, and I did not expect to like it. Chia is basically like a tea, correct? Yeah, it's a tea. It's like a milk tea. Mm -hmm. But they also put a little bit of pepper in there, which I had no idea. But now that I'm thinking about it, when you look at the bottom of the cup, you do see sediment that looks like, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's really, really good, and I suggest it. It's sold everywhere. And I suggest if you haven't had it, get some. You're gonna love it. Take my word. Thank you. Wow. Mm. You yes. like spicy? We love the spicy, yes. <laughs> yes. So I know, can we talk about the serving size of this? The serving size of every plate of food we've gotten since we've been here has been perfect. <laughs> like this is a, this is like a <laughs> You're getting all, this is like a, that macho serving size. I'm living for it. So good. Mitusa? Mitusa. For sure. Ah, mm. oh, thank you. Mmm. Ah, oh, just perfection. The star of the afternoon, Chia. Chia. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to our time in Nepal, to the amazing memories we will be making, and all the great people that will come along the way. Cheers. Cheers. I was gonna say, because if you keep going any longer, my fingers are gonna burn off. Whew. Perfection. <laughs> Perfection. So worth it. Thank you so much. Me too, sir. I believe it's how you say it. Me too, sir. Mitusa means delicious or good. Hopefully we're saying it right. Um, if we're not, <laughs> we're sorry. Please forgive us, please forgive us. We're trying to learn. I'm full, let's cross the street. Go, go. All right guys, on that note, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our other vlogs here in Nepal. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Boing. Stick around, we got a lot more to see, <laughs> do, eat, and let's just make the most of it. Namaste. Namaste.